What are we doing? You know, morning, friends. Good morning. <laughs> Did you hear Jeff? Did you hear Jeff ask what we're doing? We're doing really fun stuff. Good morning. It's the Teach Better Today morning show. Jeff, are you awake? <laughs> I didn't know you hit the button, but here we are. I guess we're live. We're live. We'll Good morning, live. friends. Happy, happy wow. day. Uh, we have a lot to discuss. One is I'm going to give Jeff a list of what is titled six hard pills to swallow. And then we're going to get into our team talk section, which is going to talk about kind of like us brainstorming how to better support our community. We really want your thoughts. So if you're live with us, make sure you're participating in the comments, especially during that time. And if you're listening to this after the fact, no stress, but direct message us or something so that we can get your thoughts. We'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. Jeff, do you know that we're live for Teach Better Talk or Teach Better Today Morning Show? I'm aware of that now, yes. Yes. Well, are you yes. really did you, did you know that you have to click the button to get the commercial to go? Do you okay, think I, I did, didn't catch that? I did click it and it wasn't processing. So then I clicked it again and again and again. Don't <laughs> sass with me. I'll click it Boy, right the now. The level of production that we've got going on here is phenomenal. You Guys, are all so lucky. Guys, you know when you have a coffee mug, it's like it was a cold mug, but I put hot coffee in it. So the bottom's Ooh. really warm, but the top is icy cold. I need it to like even up. I'm toward the end of my coffee and it's cold. You know, I don't I, mean to tell you what to do, but you uh, are currently home. You could go make more coffee. But I, I am the best dad. So like, <laughs> you know. Jeff, how are you? I am excited that we get to hang out together this morning. I mean, I obviously Teach Better Family is going to be overjoyed to see that it's you and me again. So. Of course. Yes. That 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 pesky Joshua Stamper keeps getting in and recording with you instead. But no, you, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Do you miss Katie Miglin at all? Yes. In fact, um, I was preparing though some of you know some of you don't know like every morning i usually post something to our entire team in our internal communications piece and i didn't have much i was just like hey you know good day hopefully you have an awesome time and i counted i was almost like and it's like five you know whatever many days or whatever until katie comes back because right. yeah i miss katie yeah um because not all but some of the work enough of the work than the things that katie normally does come onto my plate when she's out so i don't want to do that anymore and it's not like i've done much because yeah, but I, it's been enough where i'm like i'm gonna mess something up you know this is a really good reminder for all of us to share our i don't know what i'm doing oh oh so no. good to share our appreciation for people enjoy, we enjoy in our lives whether we enjoy them in our lives because they work with us or because they i don't know their friends or family that we just want to share appreciation let's let's challenge everybody send a text right now if you're listening to this on your phone though make sure you keep us playing while you send the text we don't want you to go anywhere but send a text to somebody and share that you appreciate them share that you hope they have a great day something simple jeff if you are not texting me right now and you're texting somebody else i'll be super annoyed just so you know you better be texting my phone. <gasps> Guys, I am texting your phone. <laughs> Guys, Jeff Vargas just texted me. He said, I appreciate you and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> well, you know. So good. Friends, we appreciate you. Thank you for being us. Or whoa, not thank you for being us. Thank you for being with us this morning. I need to clearly drink more coffee. Um, while I wake up and you process the fact that we are on the show, Jeff, I have a... Um, really interesting article that I want to share with you. This okay. is titled the six hard pills you must swallow as an adult. And I don't know that I agree with all of them. And I want to hear your thoughts on if you agree. They're essentially hard truths. They're claiming these are like real. Oh, 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 sorry. I was about to say like the, the old school uh, NyQuil, like they were really big. Luckily they were the, 
they before they went to the gel caps, they were like horse tranquilizers. But that's not what you're talking about. You're talking, no, about... You're talking about literal pills. Like friends, take your vitamins. We want you to be happy and healthy okay. as long as you're possible. You're talking about hard truths that like we just all have to accept, but they're not the easiest to. Yes, okay. and there's six of them, but I don't know that we will agree with all of them. I thought that maybe we could start off a discussion as people are heading okay. into their day. I, they'll go. all be PG. So if you're listening out loud and you have kids around, like these are okay. My responses but, might not be, but go ahead. No, well, this is a family friendly show. Depends on how hard they are to swallow. Okay, here all we right. go. Number one. If you wouldn't start today, you won't start tomorrow either. If you wouldn't start today, you won't start tomorrow. If you won't start today, you won't start tomorrow either. No, I mean, that's just ap- like proven wrong literally every day. But yeah, sure. I get the sentiment behind it. The sentiment but, is like, if your mindset is, oh, I'll start working out tomorrow. Which is my whole thing about not waiting until the new year. And you'll stuff. have an and excuse actually, tomorrow. When I recently started working out, I told, I'd given myself like a 10 day. And then I was like, why am I doing that? After three days of like waiting, I'm like, wait a minute. That's I'm going against. Yeah, so I agree with the sentiment, but that's not a truth. No, like, I think you need to. Okay. Don't ruin this activity by like motivational. T- no, no, no. Statement. We're talking about the concept, the concept overall, the concept of, but it's also the concept's not true. Depending on what it is. It's, but I, I understand it. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to ruin your joke, but that was a poor start. Go ahead. There's no joke. It's, this isn't a joke. It's just like the concept of, Hey uh, friends, this is a general. Currently like, this list is a joke, Ray. Okay. Okay. I, I will be better on number two. Go to number two. I apologize. I will be. Can I, I'm, can I have I, someone I, in the comments come live with me and do this activity? Please. Please. I I will be better. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I and we're only six better. minutes into the show. Number two, being selfish isn't a bad thing. Fill your own cup before trying to pour into everyone else's. I agree with that one. No nitpicking on the language? <clears throat> no, I agree with that one. I think it's, yeah. I think the term selfish as an adult I've learned is frequently overused. Like selfish doesn't necessarily have to mean that you will always give to others and not yourself. Like it's okay to care about yourself as well. I don't know that I even consider you caring about yourself as selfish. No, I I think, I think the key is, I think the context is important because I think selfishness really is only bad if you're, I don't, I don't want to say if you're a bad person, but like if your intentions are poor, So like, I mean, you know, it's clear, like obviously taking care of yourself, which can be concerned like in a moment or individual decisions to, in order to do that might be, and might appear and might feel selfish. But if the end goal is actually that you end up actually being better for everyone because you're better then that's not selfish at all. And it's actually selfish to not do it because then you're not as good to everyone. Um, so yeah, I agree with that one. I don't have any. I was you're better. Really mad at me, but I just lost this article, and now I'm trying to. You did not just lose the article. I literally did, and I was thinking, I was like, during this, during the live show, I really can't lose this article I'm reading, and it like just jumped to the page, and now I can't find it. Jeff, what, what was it under? It was an Instagram like post thing. How do I search this? You know, it's funny is I, I'm finding like so many different articles, and none of them start with the same thing, so they're clearly not the same. Oh my God, I'm so mad. Uh, Six hard pills to swallow. Oh, hard pills to swallow. I, I did truth. I need to do pills. Pills. I'm so mad. It's I had a, a great whole show. Planned. It's a great show. I'm so glad we're here. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me mad because weren't you excited for all this... six? <laughs> the first two were so thrilling. Let's see. Like none of these. I like this one though. This is different, but. Here's one. Rejection means your pitch sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have this whole list. Oh, here's different? an interesting one. Dreams are useless. That's Vision boards I'm... need to be lit on fire. That's literally the one I just read. I was like, dreams are useless. I don't like this one at all. Hurt people hurt people. That's true. Wait, what are your thoughts on that one? Ooh, this one I like, and it kind of goes that one. It's never the right time to do anything. That's one of my favorite. Okay, wait, can we discuss those two further? Because sometimes yeah. things need to like sit for a second. So read one of them again. It's never Perfect. the right time to do anything. Okay, it's never the right time to do anything. 
that kind of connects to the last one we talked about. But it's it goes into like I'm ready. I'm waiting till I'm ready. I'm waiting till the right time. Well, if you do that, you're literally never gonna do it. Well, and we he- we see that when people like are thinking about having children, when people are thinking about changing jobs, when people are, um, like it's really those when you're scared to do something. <clears throat> mm-hmm. and- well. For, for me, go, right time. yeah, like when, when you think about, and obviously this is, this is a broad statement because like, obviously there's certain things that's very easy to see, but like we think about like the right decision, like obviously like when it's a moral thing, that's one thing, but like when you think about like a career choice, like, oh, I can go this way, I can go that way. And you get so tied into it. And it's the thing is like, well, there is no right decision and it doesn't matter anyway, because if you pick this one, you'll never know if the other one was actually right. You might figure out that this one was wrong or didn't work out like you thought, but that doesn't mean the other one would have turned out any different. Well, it's the same thing like right time to do anything. Well, right now might be the right time, or maybe it was three years ago when you should have, or maybe it's two years, of, but you won't know because you can't go to or before. You know what I mean? So like. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because I've also learned, I feel as I've grown not only in my you know lifetime, but in my field that you can always go back. Like, I think that's a really tough misconception between educators that they think when they make a shift that they're like married to that decision. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I actually think that some of the most wonderful educators I engage with are ones that have taken a, a a step in a direction Mm -hmm. and then didn't stay there for 10 years, like changed after either because they weren't interested anymore because a different opportunity. And yeah, I think there was this misconception when I was younger that you should be prideful to have the same job for 35 plus years. And now Mm -hmm. I'm realizing that most people, especially in the education field, I'm encouraging you specifically should be making those shifts because you learn by changing and you shouldn't, you don't really lose as much as you feel you you may moving from one to the other. Yeah. And well, it's interesting. I don't want to go too far into this world, the, the, the thinking and the thought process, but the whole idea of like staying with a job for 30 years is it was respectful and prideful is literally propaganda from a capitalistic machine of like trying to, that, that like there's no actual like truth to it. It was something that we were taught so that we would go and work and never complain about anything. Cause, and it worked, worked really well, like yeah. for a lot of people, but like, that's not true. It's like, no, nah, you should be doing something that you, yeah, I just <laughs> I, to do. And if you don't love what you're doing and you hate it or it's not right for you, then you should go do it. Th- and that that goes from industry to position, whatever. When as you were saying that, I was thinking of someone recent, two people that I can think of right now, educators who one had moved up like like they were supposed to, and became an admin, and then became a never next level up admin, and is now next year now planning already arranged to go back into the classroom because mm-hmm. they just miss it and they just weren't enjoying their life. They, they did it. They did admin work, I think for seven years, seven or eight years right. and enjoyed it, but now don't go back. And most people would be like, well, how do you like, that's a swallow on your pride thing. Right. The other one left the classroom to pursue speaking and consulting and did well with it. Could continue doing it and is going back to the classroom. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, like a, yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like I time. was more or less, I feel like I was handed my dream job. At the time, what would that would have been like 15 years ago? And as I worked in that dream role, five, six years in, I was really comfortable, like not in a way that is negative. Like some of us just, you get in a job you enjoy mm-hmm. and I was comfortable. I wasn't really pushing myself, but I I also felt like I was doing good work, even though I wasn't pushing myself to necessarily go any further in it. And it's so interesting how much. I almost didn't like the challenge. Like I missed the challenge. I missed the, like sometimes the peaceful position is the right position until Mm -hmm. you need to add more fuel, you know? And then I obviously started this job, which then became my new favorite dream job. Dream job. This is my dream job. And then, you know, like who knows though, like you and I joke all the time, like the moment another job comes up that feels like it should be the dream job is the time that you maybe start an exit plan and you, you know, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think your commitment, your dedication, and your loyalty should necessarily be to a job or a, a school organization or whatever. It should be to your own happiness. And I know that sounds kind of whatever, but like it well, should and, be. And sometimes you do that reflection and you're like, actually, I'm exactly where I want to be. And mm-hmm. that's great, right? Yeah, like you don't have good. to do a shift. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing you said, not to, not to keep continue this like ridiculous conversation, but 
um, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. Yep. I think that that is something I need to like have as a better reminder in my life. Cause sometimes I find that people around me, I'm perceiving them as being like mean or disrespectful or not, not choosing to be kind. That's like maybe a pet peeve I've developed is like people who don't choose to be nice. I'm like very hyper aware of those choices. And I think I need to remember, like, it's not me. It's like, no, sometimes, sometimes the, the hurting of you, like the, the choosing to not be kind or choosing to be mean or whatever is actually the way that they distract themselves from the pain that they have. Right. Right. And how they get through it. And the only way they know how. Yes. Yeah. That is totally, I'm not sure how often like all of you in our teach better network or you, Jeff, I don't know how often you notice your pet peeves, but that is like very much one over the last year or two that I've developed is it drives me nuts when people have the opportunity to be kind, not, not agreeable, not go with the flow, Mm -hmm. but just like you can disagree and be kind and like the choice not to do the choice to be more mean, aggressive, disrespectful than you needed it to be. Like, I don't know. It's just like, well, well, and even when it's uh, even less, uh, obvious than that where it's you have the opportunity to do something kind you choose just not which isn't necessarily yeah. mean but you didn't take right. the opportunity is is very often is caused because you don't feel you almost feel like that act of kindness is actually a negative against you because yes. you've, been, you've been hurt your whole life or recently or whatever mm-hmm. yeah that's a that's a really that i don't know when i picked that up Um, but like, that's one of the, I think one of the most important lessons I've ever learned in my life was that if someone's mean or just a negative person or a, has a negative outlook or doesn't trust anyone or whatever, like it's typically like, that's just pain coming out one way or another. Mm -hmm. So someone who handles, if you ever want to see like the master, masterfully, masterfully, masterfully handled is Pat Flynn when he's on a live stream, because he gets a ton of people and you get those people in there and Pat just without missing a beat, just will like get some like exit out of his live stream, but then he'll refer to them and say, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened to you. That made you feel like that's how you have to respond in this place. But like, this is a safe space. We all love you here. We want to help you grow. And then he just like goes right through. It doesn't even affect him anymore. And like, you know, someone who live stream with like thousands of comments, you know, yeah. minute, like that's a, um, Gary Vanderchuk, someone who have also seen do that really well, like in live and stuff like that. Like it's, it's a, it, when you do that, like it's, it's a whole lot, I don't know. I think it's a, a better world to live in when you know that in my yeah. opinion, because you just don't, I don't know. Well, we can apply it to students we're talking to colleagues Absolutely, we're talking yeah. to, you know, I, just, I think it's harder to apply it to adults than students. I think as an educator, like you've learned to look at your students and go, okay, well, they got, they're carrying a lot with them. Yes. They're bringing stuff from home, trauma and for what, but when we, then we pull that out and we go into the adult world, we're like, well, wait a minute, you should know better or yes. whatever. And it's like, well, no, no. Totally. Maybe they never had anyone that helped them. You know what I mean? So, or they just don't know how to ask for support. I mean, even with like yeah. our own partners and spouses, like some, something comes across rude and rather yeah. than making it into an argument, many of us will stop and be like, are you okay? Can I, can I, can I help you in some way you're making mm-hmm. this choice to be snooty? <laughs> how can I help you? <laughs> anyway, we hope you all are having a good morning. And if you are feeling any anger or like need a t- need a vent, like come vent to us so you can be as kind as possible in your language and your actions as we head into an effective day ahead. Jeff, we have some brainstorming to do, and I literally saved this brainstorming for the show. So oh, okay. I don't think you even know what we're talking about. But no, this I don't. Is- I never do. Like I know I don't know if people think that I'm joking, but like she does not tell me what we're. T- Anyone, everyone else gets like a preview of what's coming. Like I, she doesn't give me anything. She's just like, I've got it. And I just have to be on here and hopefully. Well, it's um, on my to-do list to do something. And then I looked at it, it on here. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I need to talk to Jeff. Oh, and then I was thinking is- like, oh, we're doing a, a live show. Okay. I'm right. going to just brainstorm there. So hit the button. And let's do this. I'm, I'm in.
welcome back to Teach Better Today Morning Show, where we get to join you live and hopefully be a part of your morning routine every single Monday through Friday morning when you're heading to work and excited for the day ahead. We obviously like to share shenanigans with you, but during team talk, this is where we like to have some sort of educational conversation. We very, very much would like your thoughts on this. We'll be monitoring the chat, not even not like when we're live, but also after the fact, because your voice is really important in this conversation. So if any of you are listening now and maybe want to tag a friend to listen to this part of our lives so they can give their thoughts too, the more the merrier. I would love to get as many educational voices in this as possible. So share away. Jeff, on my to-do list, I have something with your name on it. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. So as many of you are aware, we're in December, and so many applications that we had open in November have closed. And now the team is going to work all month long in our different committees using these, like, you know, obviously very fancy schmancy rubrics to try and get all through all these different applications of educators applying for programs within the Teach Better family and hopefully get as many acceptance letters and scholarships and all these things out that we can. One of the ones that I know is going to be very exciting for our team to continuously go through is the grid method certification program. Mm -hmm. Jeff, the grid method certification program was like an idea we've had for, I don't know, forever. Like since the team was created in 2015, mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally somewhere in there. And yeah. our goal for this program was to not only support educators in using mastery learning, but also to like certify those educators out there that are just rocking it to present and share their knowledge and kind of just be seen as the leaders they already are in this field and celebrate them. So we're giving out these full scholarships to whoever gets accepted, right? Like it'll be a small group because this is our pilot, but we're hoping to open this up, obviously more assuming mm -hmm. it goes well. And it's really exciting that we like officially did it, right? 2023 applications were open, 2024 program's going to launch. It'll be exciting. So one of the things on my to-do list is to brainstorm what support we can, should, will offer to people that apply to be a part of that grid method certification program, but aren't accepted this round. Oh, like the, okay. the people that like, for whatever reason, because of numbers, we had to uh, like, unfortunately yeah, say- Yeah, because we've had a lot of, there was a lot of people that applied. Yeah, I mean, we lot. had over a hundred applicants. I mean, it was like, we have a ton of people. Yeah. Looking for this, but I think we're only taking like 10, like 15. I don't know, because we haven't actually done this yet. Yes. And we cannot take everyone. We can't take everyone. Yeah. And we want it to be a program that we can really dedicate our our full effort towards. So keeping it small is very strategic. We yeah. want to get to know the people and their their work intimately. We want to give them very direct personalized <laughs> feedback. So we're starting small. And while we hope it opens again, we don't necessarily have a launch date for that, but I hope it's like within the next few months that we decide to to open up applications again. But for the, you know. 90% of people that applied and don't get accepted, do we have and can we brainstorm some cool grid support for them? Because there's educators from all across the world and educators with all different types of knowledge on the grid method. Like we had them rate. I don't know if you saw that in the application. We had them rate where they feel like their grid mm -hmm. is. Yep. And everywhere for like, I just heard about it today. So I decided to apply to, I applied in my classroom every single day. I feel like I'm an expert. Like we had the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things, so we start with the stuff we already have, like those free resources? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously like direct and make sure that they get the free ones. I wonder if like, so obviously anyone who goes through the cohort is going to get access to the, the full online course. Because that's the, the full online like workshop course. The workshop course, yeah, the full yeah. online like the workshop course. Because that's a lot of what's referencing and going through, and obviously everyone who's going through the cohort sh needs to have gone through that and stuff. But yeah. like, can't we just give that also to the people that applied? I mean, a lot of them already have taken, probably possibly already taken it, maybe not. Well, but I think but that's I think important. we can give that to anyone who applied too. Why not? I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, like why not? Like right. Uh, so there's two for those. Of you who the hope is that the people that who don't get don't aren't in this cohort are just going to join another one later on. That's a hope. Possibly the so, next one. You know, I mean. So a few things in terms of like course wise. There's the free introduction course to the grid method, mm -hmm. which is like, I don't know if we were to do it at your school district. It's like anywhere from a 45 minute to 90 minute 
dive into what the concept is and how the grid method affects it. <clears throat> a little higher view. Yeah. Not yeah. quite as deep into things. Yep. Uh, there are some downloads there, but it's, you know, like kind of like, again, that top level view. Mm -hmm. Then we have the workshop, which is a yeah. paid course that you get included in your membership. Mm -hmm. And if any of you want to take that, haven't taken that, you should like direct message. Jeff and I will find a like freebie code for you somehow. <laughs> and then they can take the workshop. The workshop is part of what they're going to go through in the certification. Yeah. That includes the full workbook that mm -hmm. everybody can will be able to get. It yeah. also includes like step-by-step, -step, not only how to get started, but also all the way through implementation. Yes. It's, it's equivalent to like what we, the, like a, a like a full two day yeah. workshop training that we would do with uh, a, a partner district. Yeah. I was going to say like this workshop, isn't it typically when we work with, schools it's like two eight hour days i mean it's like a ton of content six, six to eight yeah yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's a lot of, i think i think that the online we, we equate it to like 12 hours of, well, and the of hope, between videos and work time yeah the hope would be that you like watch a three minute video and then you have an assignment you're, doing, work. yeah, you're yeah. working on something for your class for yep. your class so that's good um and, and few, go ahead those, in addition to those there's also some really good downloads if you guys go over to teachbetter.com slash the grid method. If you don't want to remember that, just direct message me and I'll send it to you. That has so, I, mm -hmm. I just saw it the other day because we were exploring that website with a group I was with. There are so many downloads, including the teacher frequently asked questions. Yep. And it actually the, includes teacher frequently asked, student frequently asked, and admin or admin parents, admin parents, admin parent, parent teacher. Yeah. Yes. It has the connection to all the evaluation standards, mm -hmm. not only in state specific, but also general, like Danielson model. Mm -hmm. Includes those question stem. I love that download. That's my favorite yep. download we've ever done. That's my favorite. There's also Ray. I don't and I don't know if we have these linked on that page or not, but we have some free, I think they're all free courses that are replays of like when we've done building the grid, totally. but um live stream series and stuff like that too, that all I think are also really, really great. Like when we're We've had yeah. where you've done it and Chad's done it, possibly Katie too before, like where you built, literally built grid, or at least started the process or in the middle of or completed a grid with a educator live. Right. In the academy, we at least have three different series of those. And yes. in those series, we individually met with a essentially like a random teacher in our network, all different grade levels, all different subject areas. And just, it was an hour brainstorming. I, they're some of my favorite yeah. conversations to have and those were just recorded we did like a series so you can go check those out that will be real helpful so i think those are all things could we and this is the problem with brainstorming live is that everyone's gonna hear this so like if we go against this and they think it's a good idea it's gonna be but that, that's why i want in the comments like if you guys so, want this tell us and we'll do it what if we like so what if we thought about this and like this is I, i'm like ray and i've not discussed this this is literally me thinking of it. this is sometime how's this go so we'll see like we had all these people apply, so they want to they want to up their game. They want the certification, and honestly, I like the people that are being selected. Like I don't, they're like the majority. We've looked at some of the applications. Like most of them are all people who are who would be great in the cohort. We just sure. can only take so many. Yeah. So like, what if it was almost like we have the cohort that's going to go through the cohort, but then you have this other cohort, which is people who can't be a part of this one, and they get like some live support throughout this next year. Right. Like, I don't know why they're like, you know, they're like on the bench waiting or whatever. They get like, even if it's like once a quarter or something throughout the year where they get like, like a, a, a live, like live meaning like on Zoom, like, you know, time with you or Katie or Chad or something like that where they can get, you know, questions. Uh, maybe we run them through some stuff. Maybe it's just a, like a Q&A brainstorming thing. Maybe you can bring a cohort person or two in to like share some of what's going on so they get an idea. And I think I it's a great idea. Like that. Another outlet that I just thought of, because Jeff, I think that idea is great, is if any of you have questions, like if you're hearing us say, oh, we'll do an open Q&A, and in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, thank God, because I have like four big things that I just can't move beyond, and I really want that discussed, submit it as a listener question, like on our show. Like we would love, I yeah. love talking grid. Like I love talking education, but grid specifically, I think that there is never a dumb question, and if there are questions that you guys consider dumb. I promise you I've asked them before. Like <laughs> I am, I have no shame. And I think those are just good. Like send us a grid and let's, let's pull up the grid live on the show and like talk through it. Like, I don't know. I love that. That I love being able to support and there's not a right way to do it for us. So 
Let us know what you want. If you're looking for any sort of support, whether it's a student you're struggling with or it's content related or instruction related, like the grid method, it just was exciting to me in the middle or, or to the end of November to see that educators at the end of 2023, with all that we've gone through over the last five years specifically, still want to push themselves. You want to put the time and effort into something yeah. like this? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I feel like educators that I talk to day to day are like telling me how tired they are and how this profession is really draining. And I think that's true. Don't get me wrong, but 100%. I almost was inspired seeing how many educators were like, yeah, yeah. it's tough, but this is going to be the right step for me and my kids. And that's cool. I think that's cool. I have respect. It's that. really cool. It's, it's, it's one of the things I love most about what we do is because the people, the people we work with, that's you, the educators that are hopefully watching some of this, like it is, it's like, it would be a completely 1000% justified if nobody applied to be in this. They were like, we're all too busy because of course you are. But like, yeah. Now, even when you're beat down, busy, underappreciated, and like, it's still like, no, I want to do this. I want to commit to this however long, whatever long. I can't remember how long it is, but it's not like it's a just, day. No, it's, no, it's a few months. I, I want to say a few weeks, but it's not. It's, I think it's like no, a, it's a couple it's months, months. And it's, like, it's, it's, a it's program, weekly yeah. meetings coming together. It's assignments. Like, it's doing work. Yeah. Um, You know, so yeah. I had a awesome. few people. Can I just say a few people? Not just one. Uh, like, at least 10 email me throughout the month of November wanting to know the time commitment. And when teachers ask the time commitment for something, it's never like any other industry. Like, like I had teachers email me being like, Hey Ray, I have a question on the time commitment because I'm a mom and I'm also running this club and I'm also the department chair. And I also do my own uh like workout classes and I'm reading I'm and I'm a coach a soccer club. basketball cheerleading and and yeah. lacrosse so like anything less than like four anything more than four hours a week would be really tough for me I'm like oh my god <laughs> I'm like you'll be fine trust me I'm also the interim principal and yes that's what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if you ask like Matt, he would, I would be like, Hey, are you free? And he's like, no, I just like send an email in an hour. And so I have no time this week. <laughs> I do, uh, I do some, I had to do banking today and I'd log on and write a check. It was rough. I mean, I'm not saying those things aren't on my to-do list, but anyway, so friends, I hope you let us know. This has been way yes. too long of an episode. We're so sorry, but we hope that you continue to let us know your thoughts. We're here to support you. And if any of you want to trade out Jeff on the next show, just direct message me. I'd love to have you. So be good. Bye guys. See you soon. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. 